I, I, I know I feel bad. Did you feel when that breaker anointing came in here? That was just, <laughs> that was so awesome. Because uh, <laughs> this journey has been uh, really interesting. We've had our moments to press through to get where we uh, need to be. Matter of fact, Dutch got to the airport this morning. His flight had canceled. Uh, we were in San Diego last night. And so he, he realized after waiting, he had to drive. So let's thank God he pressed through to get here. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I spoke because the Lord spoke to me. I, we, we, I was back at our place and which I haven't been there too much this year. This has been a very interesting year, 560,000 miles so far. Yeah, it is interesting. But uh, I was there and the Lord spoke to me on Friday and said, it's time to be healed. And uh, so I just assumed the Lord was telling me he wanted me to speak on Sunday, so uh, Robert Heidler, of course, who is such an awesome teacher worldwide, but he, he's teaching a new series that the Lord has spoken to us, and so I said, you do the first service, and I'll do the second service, and I did a time to be healed. The Spirit of God healing broke out everywhere, and then I realized I had stirred something up. You know how you just realize some way or another i poked a beehive or something and uh we continue to have to go and keep moving uh and as we've been on this journey which i'm about to show you aaron whenever you're ready i'm ready to uh show how the lord has been moving uh last year the lord told us to uh go across america this year and several reasons and dutch Hopefully, we'll explain that to you, but this year is key to pave the way for our future, and on January the 3rd, my daughter, who lives in California here, called me and said, have you heard anything the Lord's saying this year? And I usually start my year at Rosh Hashanah every year. I've been doing that since I was 19 years old, and... Uh, so I don't usually always ask the Lord at the beginning of the uh, year each year or our calendar year about what all he's saying because I've been seeking him since uh, Rosh Hashanah. And I, but I knew I needed to ask him about this year. And so I said, Lord, what are you saying about 2019? And he said, plow through it. So that said to me, there was going to be a lot of old ground that needed to bro be broken up. It was going to be a lot of uh, seeds that needed to come to aeration so they would spring up. I grew up on lots of acreage. And uh, one of the things we would have to do is determine which field we were going to plow determine what we were going to sow in that field, and uh, then we would proceed with the process of causing the land to come into a new level of fruition. And so <clears throat> I knew that the Lord was saying this year you had to move through so that we would see this land shift in a new way. And uh, you can notice up here, here's where we've been. You just turned yellow yesterday and today. Let's thank God for California now. And we lack one other gathering, of which will be the week after Thanksgiving, in Colorado, and we feel like this year the Lord has done what he's asked us, we've done what he's asked us to do this year, preparing for the change of us moving into a whole new 
season and a whole new era ahead. So it's been really interesting. You can look up, there's been four places we knew we had to do two meetings. Uh, one of those was uh, uh, Texas because of because there's certain places that are a stronghold that need to shift. Uh, another place that we did to were, was Washington because we knew we needed to go to the healing rooms. We knew it was significant this year for a time to plow to hit into the healing movement for the future. And I, I'm not sure I fully realized we would be here with you, Rick and Lori, when we were there with Cal. And so at, that was close to the beginning of us doing this journey, and now we're here. And it's like the Lord has said clearly, you are plowing up the next move of healing in this land. And... People like you who are so uh, called to healing. And um, one of the things you see once the apostolic church arises and we come into a new order, you have first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then you have miracle workers and healers. And I feel like the closer we get to God's government coming in order in this land, in his kingdom people, the closer we get to unlocking the next move of the miracle workers and the healers. And uh, so I believe this meeting is very significant as we gather here, not only for the West in California, uh, as you've seen we've progressed through uh, uh, the nation, but it's also very important for a move of God that we are right on the verge of going into. Tell somebody you're on the verge. And I don't mean the verge of a nervous breakdown. I mean, you, if you are, you're at the right place. You're on the verge of breakthrough. Now, now, the other place we did two meetings, I saw Deborah Lamworld and, and her, her girls here, was Georgia, which was last week. That was after I said it's time to heal. And so we went to Georgia, and it was the reason we did two places was the Lord said, I want you to do Atlanta because we've always stayed very focused with Atlanta. But then I want you to go to Savannah. Because Savannah is really the occult uh, capital of our nation. One of the occult centers of the world. And after I had said it's time to heal, when I got off the plane in Georgia, I really didn't just stir something up. I stepped into something. Have you ever just stepped into a pile and you wonder how you're going to get this thing off of you? And I stepped into something in Georgia, and I know enough because of my background. My background had a, a godly inheritance and an evil inheritance in it, and one was very, very godly. Uh, the other side operated in spiritism. So I know lots about the occult. I know lots about supernatural manifestation and I know what it does in both the atmosphere and the ground. So by the time we got to Savannah, the enemy had tried to remove my ability to walk. My, all of a sudden, my ankle was this big. I had gout. Of course, my wife said, what have you eaten now? I said, why do you always have to go there? She said, because I've known you for 50 years. That's why I always have to go there. I said, I think it's linked with a lot of warfare that's here. She said, yes, and that's why you shouldn't have eaten what you ate. 